brave warriors of the Steel Legion. I speak to you directly. Do not fear! I have not been slain by the Xenos scum, as some of you feared when I could not be found on Armageddon Prime. I have Considering the roots of the tabletop game, it's slightly odd that there are so few turn-based adaptations of Warhammer 40k's gothic science fantasy universe. Relic's Dawn of War was a lot of fun, but its action-based RTS gameplay didn't offer a huge amount to fans who prefer to lead their armies from the back, sipping a nice white wine and making the key tactical decisions while those grubby hiver types do the actual dying a few hundred miles away on the front line. Slytherin is hoping to capture this more measured, strategic style of play with its latest war game, Warhammer 40k Armageddon. Warhammer 40k's merry band of orcs, fun-loving hooligans who like nothing more than a big scrap, have invaded the grimy industrial world of Armageddon, and it's down to the humans of the Steel Legion and the transhuman space marines to fend off the greenskin hordes. While there are characters and a plot of sorts in Armageddon, it's best not to dwell on them too much. The narrative is entirely presented in simple text boxes, and voiceover work dials the cheese up to the highest possible values. But that's okay, though games like Space Marine prove you can tell a decent story in a 40k game, in Armageddon the focus is strictly on war, war and war. Only war, in fact. There are three campaigns, each split into roughly ten or so missions. Most objectives involve capturing various points on the map, though there is a decent mix of terrain types and other battlefield variations to change things up a bit. Fighting through destroyed hive cities, for example, is a different proposition to meeting your enemy on the open plain, thanks to unique values and cover ratings for each type of terrain. Essentially you're fighting the same war of course, but little variations like these in unit distribution and terrain layout, and some steady progression until you unlock the mighty space marine armies, go a long way towards providing some decent variety. So the basic framework of the game will be instantly familiar to anyone who's played Panzer Corps, Slytherin's hex-based World War II war game. If you have played that game, in fact, you'll probably be a little disappointed at how little Armageddon adds to the experience. Once again, each of your units can move and fire once, discharging every single weapon at its disposal in the firing round. There's the familiar rock, paper, scissors rules to consider, dialed up to 11 by the ridiculous firepower of some of 40k signature units. Infantry are great for sucking up damage and screening your lines, while tanks, artillery and lumbering dreadnoughts are great for dealing major damage. Warlord Titans, meanwhile, destroy pretty much everything in their path. Different weapon loadouts and variations blur the lines in interesting ways though. One Dreadnought might pack a LAS cannon or missile launcher for dealing with armour, while another might eschew ranged weapons entirely in favour of melee domination. You have to think about each move you make, making sure the unit you've selected is right for the task you want it to do. Skillful use of combined arms is essential, as the enemy is generally pretty quick to swap weaknesses in your line and exploit them. On a basic level, the general play is smooth and not too difficult to grasp, but a lack of feedback and some presentation issues bog things down. The clunky UI creates unnecessary problems for itself. For example, you're often dealing with a score or more units on the field, but the game does a poor job of making it clear which of your units have moved and which is still ready to go. Environmental factors, morale and other variables aren't communicated well either. Unit statistics aren't displayed prominently enough in the field, forcing you to go into the purchase menu and gaze blankly at a huge spreadsheet of numbers. It's also hard not to feel that Slytherin could have cut out some of the units in the game to make ordering in new troops less of a brain ache. The requisition menu, which lets you call in additional units during a battle in return for command resources, is jam-packed with the bewildering array of vehicles taken from 40k lore. It's nice for franchise enthusiasts, but slightly annoying for commanders who just want to drop in a new tank, but instead have to sift through dozens of only incrementally different units listed in a huge block in order to find what they need. Combined with the fact that most of these units look almost exactly the same in battle, and you often end up accidentally charging a tank line with a Lehman Russ equipped with anti-infantry weapons. This is something of a double-edged sword, because while it is great that Slytherin has studied the lore in such depth, ultimately I'd rather they cleaned up the unit list and got rid of some of the redundant options. It may also have given them the chance to concentrate more on air units, which for some reason operate essentially as tanks. They can't share tiles and you can't use them to scout ahead, because their vision range is the same as any other armoured unit. This renders them rather pointless, oddly enough. This focus on the minutiae of strategic combat also comes at the expense of some visual panache. For some reason, that seems like more of an issue in 40k, which feels like it should feature more fireworks and flair than what's on offer here. 
Unit models, aside from the always cool looking space marines of course, are never more than functional. There are explosions effects when you blast an enemy with your mighty titan unit, but they're fairly underwhelming and units simply seem to blink out of existence after being destroyed. Ultimately, all the insane weaponry of the orcs and lumbering monstrosities of the Imperium boil down to mere skin changes of Panzer Corps World War II tanks and soldiers. That's a bit of a shame. I hope you like mud too because you'll be fighting across a whole lot of mud. Armageddon doesn't make for a particularly varied and interesting setting in terms of visuals. Despite that lack of flair and some frustrating issues with presentation, Armageddon does at least play out a compelling and competent brand of strategic warfare. There's something about playing a turn-based game that hits right at the core of 40k's signature mix of strategic planning and reckless aggression. If you've never played the tabletop game, you'll find Slytherin's made a decent enough fist of recreating some of the same atmosphere. If you can find another armchair general with a fondness for grim darkness, then you'll probably get a decent amount of value out of the multiplayer in particular. For a full price game though, Warhammer 40k Armageddon feels lacklustre and slightly cheap, more of a reskin of Panzer Corps than its own beast, and lacking the sense of grandeur that the setting requires. There is a great turn based 40k game out there somewhere, but this just isn't it. Warhammer 40k Armageddon scores 6 out of 10.